Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my first impressions of the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i for 2025. Now, this just arrived from the manufacturer for review purposes. I'll include a link in the description for those of you interested in ordering one. And this particular build has a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD. It retails for roughly 3,500 US dollars. But keep in mind, if you go with the exact same build through Best Buy, it's $26.99. The only difference is that it has a one terabyte NVMe SSD. And that ultimately could end up being one of the best value and overall performers in its space at that $2,700 mark. Granted, we do live in this new tariff driven world here in the States, unfortunately. So moving right along, let's get into what is different with this refresh. Uh, of course, the Pro 7i, arguably one of the best in its class year after year. I cover it every year. And those are some pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, but with the Intel Ultra 9 275HX processor, we've got some very impressive efficiency and overall performance with this new silicon. We've got NVIDIA's RTX 5080, which now has 16 gigs of VRAM. So pretty much taking over the slot from the 4090 last year. If you want even more VRAM, of course, the 5090 is out there. But I think, again, the 5080 is the sweet spot. We've got an OLED display that's part of the refresh. Finally, Lenovo incorporating a 500 nit 240 hertz panel. This means 100% DCI-P3. If you're a content creator, do anything design centric, you're going to be really happy that you now have true color accuracy on a machine that wasn't held back by it not being there, but certainly is enhanced by now having uh, this on board. And it's going to be infinitely better for gaming as well. Nearly zero latency. It's just the best panel type to go with for mixed use. So I'm glad it's finally here. The biggest drawback from previous gens to this new refresh is that the IO has been moved from the back to the sides. This is something I personally am not a fan of, but I'm not going to penalize Lenovo for something that they are saying at face value is really to improve thermals, better performance overall. And I'm assuming uh, also make this more affordable for them to manufacture within the, which in the face of the new tariffs, hopefully this helps. I don't know that it does. So don't, you know, quote me on anything here. And then RGB has been added to the rear. So that and moving of the IO, these are two things I could have done without, but overall, I like the fit and finish of the machine. Still exudes a high quality build, aluminum chassis, same great keyboard, numerical keypad, per key RGB, a lot of RGB if you want it, but then a very subdued design. If like me, you want something that really can look and work like a workstation without screaming that it is a gaming machine. So let's start by taking a look and a listen to the display. And by the way, 32 gigs of DDR5 pre-installed on this machine. It is, of course, user upgradable, just like the NVMe two slots on board. So let's take a look and a listen uh, to this. And as you may have noticed, also a redesign with the speakers. The screen can only go back this far now. It used to be a 180 degree uh, rotation, but no longer. And also the webcam has been improved. Speakers should be at 100%. They are. Make sure they are in YouTube, and they are. Excuse that L. It's part of a new piece of software that I regret activating, which I'll turn off for the full review. So what I can tell you already, as I kind of, you know, introduced this machine is that this OLED is a phenomenal addition to it. And one of the best ways to improve this machine was to upgrade its display. So again, very happy that Lenovo did this. I mean, 240 Hertz OLED, it's still 2560 by 1600 res, but I think that strikes a sweet spot uh, for performance and pixel density for the gaming space that it's in. The 16 inch panel is excellent. Now you'll hear some spoken word. Uh, granted, my audio in this isn't my usual studio mic, but still good, you know, just to hear what audio sounds like when someone is speaking. It's on there for just about everything, but I'm still not finished. Certainly haven't started installing games or any of my other content creation software for editing, 
but we'll get there. But in the meantime, wanted to show all of you what the build looks like. Uh, this is the MSI Meg Maestro 700. I think it's the PZ. I'll include links in the description for it. And again, great speaker performance from what I've you know experienced thus far. Great display quality, no touch screen. It is high gloss. If you couldn't tell, you probably see me. A little bit of a reflection going on here. Let's now talk about other performance features. So when it comes to uh, the NVMEs, uh, this model I mentioned has two terabytes of storage, but it appears that it's running two separate Hynix drives. They are not Gen 5, as you can see from those speeds, but they are more than adequate. So if you buy this pre-configured with one or two terabytes, you will not need to upgrade it in my opinion. But of course, if you want to throw a four terabyte drive in there, you can. Uh, I believe one of the two drives will support a dual-sided drive. The other will not, so just keep that in mind. I think there's not enough space. I haven't opened it yet, but that's at least from the info I've seen so far. But that's definitely in line with what I expect to see uh, from Crystal Disk regarding a Gen 4 drive. And then you can see here the results from TimeSpy. And I have to say, I'm impressed, also not surprised. After all, this is an RTX 5080. It does have 16 gigs of VRAM, all the latest and greatest tech that you could get for a mobile machine. And as you can see, gaming is going to be a pleasure on this, especially, again, with that OLED display. So whether you're running something like Battlefield 5 at 1440 Ultra, you can see infinite frames for that. Um, I have installed Helldivers 2 on here. I will be testing that out, but it's not that demanding, so I'm not expecting anything crazy. And you can see here 90 frames uh, from Red Dead 2, which is, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 is really the, I would say, the beefiest title in the estimations that Time Spy will throw out. But that 21,386 is right in line with, you know, 4090 performance from last gen. So this is where it should be. And I, I had a lot of concerns about uh, the 5000 series mobile GPUs. And well, you know, generation over generation, the performance isn't what we saw, obviously, going from 3000 to the 4000 series. But this is still decent. And I think if you're looking for a modern machine that has it all, this is definitely headed in the right direction because you know you're going to be able to game really at 4K if you desire. I'm a 4K gamer. I live exclusively pretty much in 4K for work and gaming. Uh, so hooking this up to an external display and gaming at 4K is going to be fine, just like it was with the 4090 and even borderline with the 4080 mobile last gen. Uh, so this is right there. Now, you know, if you need more headroom, that's what the 5090 is for. You get more VRAM and more overall performance, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be worth the extra juice uh, for the cost. So we'll see. But again, really solid performance out of this. I mean, really, this is a desktop workstation in a mobile profile. Now, when it comes to battery life with this sort of hardware, uh, granted, the Intel CPU is so much more efficient this generation uh, with the new chip uh, that Taiwan Semi cranked out for them. But uh, nonetheless, this is a 99 watt hour battery. I'm not expecting more than four or five hours of battery life. You heard right, because after all, this is a gaming machine workstation monster, six pounds, roughly a little under, but with the power brick, it's more. And the power brick is now 400 watts. I did not show you this, but it actually got larger this generation. So last gen, uh, the new 330 watt brick shrunk. Now they've gotten larger. And even with the gains in Intel performance, which are really significant, I mean, this new chip is pulling, uh, from what I've seen, the same performance as the 14th gen chip at almost half the wattage. So that is very impressive, really putting Intel in line with AMD uh, performance overall. So kudos to Intel for making that leap. So this is really impressive. Again, a great display, great overall uh, performance in my opinion. At least that's my expectation. I'm going to be putting it through more paces, photo, video editing, gaming, real world testing, not just synthetic BS. Uh, everyone likes to lean on it, but you know the only way to really test this is to use it. And that is what I will be doing. Uh, but overall, really like it. Let me just show you the aesthetic. And again, that webcam seems to be solid. Um, I did not show you Wi-Fi performance. Let me just uh, throw up a quick speed test before we go. And, you know, so far, I'm just really impressed uh, with this refresh. I thought there was going to be more of a rub, frankly. Um, and again, I am not a fan of the extra RGB on the rear, which you're going to see right now in a moment. But it can all be turned off. So 
what's not to like, really. Same with the light bar here on the front. This has evolved over the years. I think this is a solid looking refresh. They've done a little bit more branding, which you'll see in a moment when I close the lid. Once our speed test is completed, you can see that Wi-Fi 7 chipset delivering exactly what I thought it would, which is close to gigabit. Um, granted, I just had a downgrade on my end with uh, my router. I may end up changing that hardware. You can kind of see that there. But let's close this up, take a quick tour around the body, because that's what you did not get to see. And you can already see uh, the Legion uh, logo is glowing. We then have a Lenovo logo set back behind the speaker bar. And then if I open this back up, the RGB should kick back on. You can now see this is that light show I was talking about. Certainly not going to be for everyone. Much more of an Alienware feel than I would prefer. Not a big fan of that design uh, language, but you know that is something that people are into. Uh, when it comes to uh, the machine overall, again, I like this matte black finish. I think it looks good. It's sharp. You turn off the RGB. This does not scream gamer. On the right side of the machine, I'll go ahead and get this a little bit tighter. You can see we've got our 2.5 gig Ethernet, our, uh, I believe that's the privacy switch for the webcam, two Type-A USB ports, uh, our headphone microphone combo jack, nothing other than the lip for the lid on the front. Come around to the left side, we have another Type-A USB port, two Type-C ports. This one is a 3.2 Gen 2, capable of power delivery and display out, so video out. This one is a Thunderbolt 4. I would have liked to have seen Thunderbolt 5, but... This is what we've got, HDMI 2.1 out, and then of course, certainly last but not least, our power port for that 400 watt brick. Um, nothing other than RGB and ventilation, more ventilation, and of course the Phillips screws to gain access. I may end up opening this up, showing that off in the full review just so you can see there's a lot of cooling going on here. That's part of the big upgrade and that's why if you know there weren't really thermal problems last gen but if this has improved uh, with that 175 watts of power going to the GPU I just don't know what there is not to like about this generation again would have liked to have retained the ports on the back but we've seen that evolve it's part of business uh, and look I miss when the Legion Pro had illuminated ports on the rear. So we can all dream about what will come next, but this is a really solid preview of also what will be a screaming machine uh, when that Legion 9i shows up with the same refreshed hardware and a 5090. Really excited to get that uh, in the studio as well. But again, at $2,700 US dollars, this does stand to get a lot closer to the pricing we were accustomed to uh, until these tariffs came to town and just turned... Machines like this that last gen were around $2,500 to $2,800, it turned them into $3,500 machines. And of course, the Legion 9i, which started at well over $3,000, topped out over four grand. I don't even want to think about where that's going to land this year. But again, really nice machine. Um, I have to you know spend more time with it for the full review, but I think many of you are going to be really, really happy with this if you're looking for a modern gaming slash workstation machine here in 2025. You will not beat that $2,700 price at Best Buy. The link's in the description. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.